guys, this looks like a fun one. It says five to the power of X plus five to the power of negative X equals 25. You're gonna try it on your own, pause it right now because I'm gonna solve it in three, two, one. This one has two different methods to solve. The first one's kind of normal. The second one uses hyperbolic cosine. I'll do the normal way first. And then when that one's done, I'll show you the hyperbolic cosine version. First thing I want to do is rewrite this five to the negative X as the quantity five to the X to the negative one power. Now we have two of these five to the power of X's. We can make this a little bit easier to work with, with some U substitution. Let's let U equal five to the power of X. And now in the place of each of these five to the power of X's, we can plug in U. Next, let's talk about what is a negative exponent. Anytime you have something to the negative one power, it means one divided by that something. So this U to the negative one power is the same thing as one over U. Here's some notes for negative exponents right here. And then we can copy down the U and the 25. Next, I don't really like fractions, so let's get rid of this denominator. We can multiply both sides of the equation by U. On the left-hand side, this u is going to distribute to both of these terms. u times u is u squared, and u times 1 over u, the u's are going to cancel, leaving us with just 1. And then on the right-hand side, 25 times u is 25u. Since this has a u squared and a u, this is a quadratic. It's going to be easiest to solve this by setting it equal to 0. Let's subtract 25u from both sides of the equation. On the right-hand side, 25u minus 25u is 0. And then on the left-hand side, we can stick the negative 25u right there. And now we have u squared minus 25u plus 1 equals 0. Let's do the quadratic formula. So that's going to give us u is equal to negative negative 25 plus or minus square root of the quantity negative 25 squared minus 4 times 1 times 1. Whole thing divided by 2 times 1. That'll simplify to 25 plus or minus square root of the quantity negative 25 squared is 625 minus 4. Four. whole thing over 2. Under the square root, 625 minus 4 is 621. And for those of us who know our 69 times tables, 621 is 9 times 69. And for the next step, the square root of 9 times 69 is the same thing as the square root of 9 times the square root of 69. And the square root of 9 is equal to 3. So now we've solved for u. It's equal to the quantity 25 plus or minus 3 square root 69, whole thing over 2. Unfortunately, we're not done because we're trying to solve for x. So in the place of this u, we're going to plug in 5 to the power of x. And now we got to solve for x. This x is in the exponent. Anytime you have the variable in the exponent, that's when we're going to use logarithms. Since the base of the x exponent is a 5, we're going to do log base 5 to both sides. Here are some properties of logarithms. The first one we're going to use says that this exponent can be brought to the front. And the next piece of note says anytime the base of the log equals the argument of the log, the whole thing is equal to 1. So now using logarithms, we've got the x all by itself. And it's equal to log base 5 of this. Since this has a plus minus in it, that means we're going to have two possible answers. We have the plus version and the minus version. These are the exact values of x. I don't believe they can get simplified any further. But we can get approximate values for x. If we plug this into a calculator, we get approximately 24.95993. And if we plug this into a calculator, we get approximately 0 0.04006. Or we can plug the whole thing into a calculator and we get these approximate values for x. It's approximately 1.999047 or negative 1.999047. And now we found our answers for x. This is the two exact values, and these are the two approximate values. And we can even combine these into a plus minus. So here we have the two exact values, and here we have the two approximate values. Let's put a box around them. You're most likely going to solve it this way. I just want to show you really fast what it would look like if you did hyperbolic cosine. Here's the notes for hyperbolic cosine. Hyperbolic cosine of a is equal to e to the power of a plus e to the power of negative a, whole thing over 2. First, we got to get these a's in terms of x. So let's do an a substitution. We're going to let a equal x natural log of 5. And then from here, we can give both of these a base of e. So it's also true that e to the a equals e to the power of x natural log of 5. And then we can play around with this a little bit. Using these notes for exponents, we can rewrite this as e to the power of natural log of 5 to the power of x. And then using these notes for logarithms, anytime you have e to the natural log of x, that's just equal to x. So e to the natural log of 5 is just equal to 5. Now we know e to the power of a is equal to 5 to the power of x. Next, let's copy down our hyperbolic cosine notes. In the place of this e to the a, let's plug in 5 to the x. And in the place of this e to the negative a, 
let's plug in five to the negative x. And now we have five to the x plus five to the negative x. We know this is equal to 25. So in the place of this, let's plug in 25. So now we have hyperbolic cosine of a is equal to 25 over two. In order to get the a all by itself, we have to do the arc hyperbolic cosine of both sides or another name for it is hyperbolic cosine inverse. This arc hyperbolic cosine function is gonna cancel out this hyperbolic cosine function. We'll be left with A. And on the right-hand side, we're just gonna leave this as arc hyperbolic cosine 25 over two. Now we've solved for A, but we actually wanna solve for X. So in the place of this A, let's plug in X natural log of five. Now this natural log of five, this is just a number. So we can divide both sides by natural log of five. On the left-hand side, these natural log of fives are gonna cancel each other out. And now we solve for the exact value of x. It's arc hyperbolic cosine of 25 over two divided by natural log of five. And if we plug this into a calculator, we get approximately 1.999037, just like before. The only difference is we only got the positive version here, but with the nature of this given problem that has the x and the negative x like this, we can deduce that the answer would be a plus or minus of that same value. Which method did you like more? Most likely, if you're gonna solve this, you would do the first method. But I hope you enjoyed seeing the hyperbolic cosine method. And I thought it was kind of interesting that this was the exact same value as this. How exciting.